Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you this huge milk carton. As you can see, it's huge. Look at the size of my hand on it. It's massive. Um, the reason I wanted to make this is because I was looking for inspiration on my shelf and I discovered my medium-sized Yankee Candle jar that I've had for years um, that just sat there. It's probably a bit dusty actually because it's been there so long. Um, but yeah, I had this bought for me. It's super cute. I love it. I love the fragrance, although I haven't dared use it yet. Um, and I thought I wanted to make a box for it, so I made this box. Now this one doesn't have one in because I do only have one this size. But I can assure you it does hold it in and you will see obviously when we make the next one. Um, I'm using the lovely Tropical Chic um, suite for this one. So I've got a Tropical Escape DSP and then obviously these are part of the stamp. And I want to say, for, I never remember framelits, thinlets, thinlets that I've used for this and then just some little rhinestone, rhinestones. Um, this bow on the top is actually for decoration. I do have the baker's twine that holds it together. The reason, it probably looks a bit odd, but the reasoning for it, and you will understand this, is because look at that ugly droopy bow. <laughs> now, I because this part is so narrow, the only thing that I could get um, small enough to punch it was the handheld punch, which as we know is only one eighth of an inch. Um, so you're not going to get a thick ribbon through that, no matter how hard you try, and not without making it look a mess. So I went with the double length of twine, um, but like I said, I just wasn't happy with the droopy bow. It just looked a mess, and so I decided to stick a bow on the front of my decoration so that actually, when people are looking at it, they don't really see this. You only see it because it's like that, but generally people will be like, oh, that's lovely, um, and wouldn't notice the twine. So anybody has any other ideas then by all means let me know um but i'm going to show you how i made it so you do need 12 by 12 cardstock for this i'm afraid because you do need two sheets that are 12 inches by nine let's try and bring everything in here um so in centimeters that will be 30.5 or a 12 by 12 sheet um cut at 23 centimeters so as i say 12 by nine or 30.5 by 23. So on your short side you're simply going to score at 4 and 8 inches which is 10.5 and 20.5 and then we're just going to mark at the 2 inch mark which is 5 centimetres. Then going to rotate so that your little mark is at the right hand side and we're going to score at 3 and a half, 9 and 11 and a half, which is 9, 23 and 29.5 in centimetres. So we'll do that again on the other sheet. So scoring at four and eight and marking at two. So scoring at 10.5 and 20.5 and marking at five. Rotate so that our little sign, our little mark here is on the right. And we're going to score at three and a half, nine and oops, eleven and a half nearly, um, and that's nine, twenty-three, and twenty-nine point five. The measurements are all on my blog, so don't worry too much about that. So before we go any further, we need to just make our little points with our marks now. I actually got beyond this and I actually made, I'm a little bit sad really, I actually made my box up, started my video, got to about 15 minutes and then realised that I hadn't put these score lines in. Here is my box, minus the score lines. I will be able to rectify it or do something with it but I was broken hearted because I only had two sheets of 12 by 12 in the Granny Green Apple and I loved it and I didn't want to do this one. Um, Tranquil Tide was just a bit too dark, but I thought, you know, I don't have any choice because I've done pink, can't do another pink really. I'm going to have to go with Tranquil Tide, so I'm absolutely gutted because I love that box and I love the colour and I love the paper. But anyway, just means I have to order some more now. So, as you can see here then, you need a good wad of paper underneath you, your ruler and your stylus, and you need to score from that mark on the score line to this corner. So again, from that score line here down to this corner here, we just need to score. 
and obviously you need to press on quite hard to mark that card and score that card and then we're going to do the same again with this one so again find that point down to that score line and the same again here from the corner to the score line okay so that's that part done at least I remembered it this time <laughs> so let's cut this let's fold and burnish our score line so the, the two vertical ones you score the, the fold and score the normal way this top one no needs to fold in on itself a little bit okay so you've got that kind of effect going on and then obviously just stamp it oh, I can't word properly today as my son would say can't get my words out then we're just going to fold and burnish these other ones so we're going to do exactly the same on this one so fold and burnish these ones this way this one is the opposite way so yes you should really fold your flip your paper over and score it but I'm, I'm lucky I remember to do these triangular bits never mind everything else so <laughs> that's just me okay so we have our two pieces now all folded up we just need to do some cutting so at the bottom here we're going to cut away this long skinny bit here so completely cut it away and cut a little bit of a wedge at the end same with this one cut away the skinny bit and a bit of a wedge and then we're just going to cut up the middle of these two to that first line just like that and then this very small square here just at this top corner we're literally just going to cut a wedge at that angle okay so turn your but why is my camera keep going out of focus turn your box this way and cut across to that score line so those are your two pieces together so now we need to adhere them so I'm going to run some tear and tape along this join here so as close to the top as you can get and then run it along that score line and that is the good thing with fast fuse unless you're going to hold it at a strange angle and run it at a strange angle you're guaranteed to get a fairly straight line so at least you can get it in a straight line against your score line so take the backing off these oops I'm getting stuck to it now so take that backing off there and that off there and then we're going to line all of this up together so making sure they all line up and then I'm just going to get my bone folder just to make sure that every single part of that is touching okay now before I adhere this piece here I'm going to put my panels across the centre so I've picked a jazzy pattern because I had to use this one <laughs> I know I'm such a baby so these DSP panels are 30, 13, 3 and 3 quarters of an inch by 5 and a quarter and in centimetres that is 13.5 by 9.5 so I'm just going to pop these beautifully light bright panels on this DSP is just gorgeous isn't it this was certainly on my shopping list when I first saw that catalogue feels like months ago now um, but yeah this was definitely one of the first things on my list um, for me it has a similar feel to it that the succulents had last spring summer I don't know if any of you guys remember those I love those I really did love using the papers and the stamps and this is you know this is on par with that for me I just think it's gorgeous I love it um, so stick my panels on so just popping those on there so those are my nice panels all stuck on so now back in with my tear and tape for this I have to fold this over it's so huge I can't get it all on camera 
So for the last bit then, we're just going to run our tear and tape again back down that seam and then just one more just obviously for the added um, adhesive. So that's those, take the backings off and then you can fold this side over to meet it. Perfect. There we go. So again, add your, run your bone folder over it just to make sure all that adhesive is stuck. And so pop, there we have our box. So obviously these pieces now here where we scored are the sides. So I'm going to do the bottom first. It doesn't really matter which side you have as the front or the back because you're going to have a join on both sides. It's whichever you decide is less ugly or prettier or whatever or straighter. Um, so we're just simply going to fold the sides in, the back up and then this piece needs to go on the front. Now I am going to use my fuse for this just because it's a tad quicker than me faffing about with tear and tape but I will have to when that does run out and then just make sure your box is sitting square pop your base down now you will notice there's a little margin here of space and that's just simply because I couldn't get the size of card I needed otherwise I wouldn't have had this piece had I have added it there um, and obviously I needed it for the top of the box so that's how we go so you can always add a square of card on the bottom if you were so bothered, but I generally think people don't look at the bottom of boxes, they look at the pretty and what's inside. So, um, so yeah, so there's my beautiful box. So now we need to make these sides fold in and it will pr pretty much go on its own. Um, I sort of like to fold this one, push this just ever so slightly and you can see it wanting to, to pull these in which again like I said it will just do and then again on this side so I'm using this hand to sort of push here I don't know if you can see I'm just literally pushing like that so I'm using my fingers here as a bit of a resist and then I'm pushing this bit down here just to get that started and as I say it just goes because you've creased it um, you'll know if it's not going that you've not done these hard enough or deep enough and then just once it's gone you just then pinch it up and you just need to straighten these pieces and pinch them all together so there's your huge milk jug so we now we need to decorate it and we need to get it closed so when you use your handheld punch I I only use this one, I generally don't use crocodiles or anything else. I think with a crocodile you could potentially get a larger hole, so you may be able to get away with that, but I'm just sticking with what I've got and what I use. Um, so these are brilliant at cutting through card, they're not so brilliant at cutting through four layers, which is what you've got here when this is all pinched together. So what I found was, first off, Where's it gone? Tiding. I'm just going to use one of our library clips just to hold it in place. So the first one's going to go on that corner and this one, once I'm happy that it's all lined and straight, it's going to go on that corner. I then get my uh, handheld punch. See, look, that's moved. It's not straight. I don't want wonky boxes. better just rearrange that side there we go that's better so obviously if you want to get a ruler and measure the distance to get equal spots that's fine I'm fairly confident that I can get fairly equal spots so I'm literally going to push this on and squeeze it with all my strength you might need somebody to help you with this if you don't have much strength in your hands because it is hard so again Whoops, just push that out of the way then. Get your, push this on as far as you can. Squeeze it with all your might and then take it off. Take your clips off and with a bit of luck, you can see, I'm hoping you can see here, the little indentations of where 
the punch was. So now I can just go along with my single sheet of cardstock, line that hole up and punch all of my holes out knowing full well they're all going to be in the right place. I'll just go around and do them all. I mean, like I said, the other option would be to um, either get somebody else to do it for you or you could mark them. Um, but this was my quickest and easiest method. And so when you close this up and you pinch them up, hey presto, your holes are all lined up. So back in with those library clips now to hold this closed. And then I want some whisper white linen thick twine rather. So I'm going to get a quite a good length of this because then I want to double the length of it so that it's double the thickness. And then, so wait a minute, so this is now the back of my box. So I'm having this as the back. So I'm going to poke these through this side and this one isn't going to go because it's a slightly different length so let's give that a little fiddle there we go so poke those through that side come on come on come on thank you okay and then we're just simply going to tie this up to hold our box closed now i heard somebody say that if you do that twice it should stay in place hmm I'm not sure this is the fiddly bit because you obviously want this to stay quite tight and then but like I said this is where I just said that it didn't matter how much I tried this didn't look pretty at all it's just it's just a droopy bow I, I'm sorry guys but it's a droopy bow let's just trim those ends off so there's my droopy bow in place take these off now and it will hold it all in place so i just want to decorate the front here with another bow so i'm just going to use some classic weave i was going to use that beautiful granny green apple ribbon I'd... no i just don't think it will look right so i'm going to use the classic weave here just the whisper white just make my bow just to put on the top to decorate slightly so yeah, look at that you see this this is a perfect bow isn't it you come to make it on something and it's impossible so it's going to trim those tails move that out of the way let's grab a glue dot and pop him and i literally stuck him just under the twine just enough so that it hid the twine and looked like it was part of the box. So, fiddle, 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 make your bow look pretty. There's my bow. So I just need to decorate my front part here. So, like I said, tropical chic, I just love it. You are the greatest, because I think if you're buying a medium-sized Yankee Candle jar, you are thinking of somebody who's great. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to stamp that on some Whisper White there, get that out of the way and then I have my one and three quarter circle punch just to punch that one out. I then have, and what I did with the other part, some Tranquil Tide and my two inch circle punch just to pop that out, so I'm getting those out of the way, that out of the way, and then I, I always find that you get these little bit of noggings, as I call them, where the punch just pushes the card. So, snail on the back of that. Now this is the simplest type of decoration I think and then I'm just going to pop some dimensionals on this ready 
and that's that bit done for now so I'll just pop that to one side and then the next bit I'm doing lots of pieces of card here I'm using the tropical thinlets and I'm using this lovely little square piece here I've got my tranquil tide so let's move all of my junk and bring in a big shot and I think for this one I I'm sure I did. I used my um, platform with my precision plate just to get that crisper, cleaner cut. So pop that on, pop that in the square, clear plate on the top, run it through. Sorry if the camera goes wobbly and shaky. So let's have that and this out of the way. Um, and then, yes, that's right, and then I'm just going to use my dye brush here just to poke these bits out because it's a bit quicker and I love this tool, it's amazing. And then I'm just going to peel this off. Where's my piercing tool? I have too much rubbish out on my desk. Lost my piercer so I'll have to grab this spare one, just get that bit out there. Right, let's put that away. Whisper White, my little die cut piece here. And then, obviously this is a bit too big for what I want. But you can see, hopefully you can see on here where the die has cut, the, the sort of the border if you like. So I want to stick it on here. So I'm simply going to grab, when I can find it, my wet glue. A little bit of a stammer there and I just simply just stuck my wet glue. Now obviously if you wanted to you could use the um, multi-purpose adhesive sheets which I absolutely adore those two. I think they're fabulous um, especially for the butterfly from springtime impressions um, it works fabulous on that too anything sort of slightly intricate, intricate it works really well so I'm going to pop this now on my piece of whisper white press it down and obviously as you noticed I didn't put a massive amount of glue on because I don't want it all spilling and coming out of the sides there and then I just need to now trim and I'm going to trim it along those lines that were already left so I'm just simply lining this up with my board that was a little bit close for my liking um, but once you've got your first line in you can obviously line the rest up butted up to the top unless like me you do things slightly wonky and then it all goes wrong but it should just trim nicely so that's that part done so I want to bring in my original to show you and so I'm going to put this at an angle and I'm actually going to stick this on with dimensionals too so I'm literally just going to put one in each corner and one in the center bring my box in and then we're just going to stick this one on at an angle and if you're anything like me and hopeless with angles then it's just hold your breath and hope for the best so I just obviously made sure that these two corners seem to line up and these two looked equal as they sort of got close to the edge so I'm actually looking in my camera now because the view of that is direct yes that's good then this little sentiment which will go in the centre and then obviously you can and this would be actually ideal for a, for a male as well because of the colours um, and then you're just going to add some embellishments now <laughs> not that I'm upset about it or anything I was going to use these ones because these are lovely um, these are the basic adhesive fact sequins um, I thought these would look fabulous with <laughs> any green apple um, 
but actually I, I think they will look quite nice on here anyway. Um, so I'm not going to do these in any particular rhyme or reason. These are just going to go on random. Let's have another one there. Oh, there's heaps of traffic going past. Oh, it's the UPS man. Sadly, he's not coming to me. <laughs> Anybody who gets stamping up deliveries knows full well that when the UPS man's about, it's an exciting time. But he's not coming to me today. Okay, so after all my rabbiting and everything else, there are my finished huge milk cartons. Aren't they adorable? Um, and yes, I know I forgot to put the candle in this one as well. Hopeless, but it does fit, I promise. Um, there are my huge boxes. I hope you've enjoyed them. Thank you for being patient and hearing me whinge. <laughs> I'm off to go and order some Granny Green Apple cardstock. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye.